Dodger Stadium, home of some of the greatest ball players in the history of the sport. Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, Pee Wee Reese, Sandy Koufax, Don Drysdale, and of course, the voice of the Dodgers, Vin Scully. A magical place nestled in the hills of Los Angeles. Hello and welcome to Work It With Juan. I'm Juan Macias, your host, and as you can see, I am at beautiful Dodger Stadium. No, I'm not here to take in an afternoon ball game. I'm here to meet with one of our social work alums, James Lopez, who works in this exciting setting every day using his MSW in a non-traditional way as an analyst for the Dodgers RBI Youth Development Program, which is part of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation. Let's go meet him. Welcome to Dodger Stadium. Thank you very much. I must say, this is a pretty sweet place to come to work. Yeah, never gets old. I mean, look at all of this. Hey, what's that? This is some memorabilia from our National League Championship and World Series run last year. Let me show you around. Cool, just a second. So James, as a social worker, how did you end up working at the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation? It all started as an internship, actually, my second year at USC uh, MSW program. Um, there was a handful of non-traditional social work internships available, and this is one that had to do with youth sports and youth development, uh, something I had experience in. So a few of my professors recommended that I look into it. I'm also passionate about sports in general. I grew up playing youth sports, so I got the internship. Um, served there for a full year and was able to accept a full-time offer at the end of that school year. Good job. Good Thanks. job. So you're an analyst. Tell us a little bit about that. Dodgers RBI is our youth development program at the foundation. So um, it's a program that's for kids ages 5 to 18. Uh, we want to get them playing baseball and softball okay. and use that sports participation as an engagement tool to deliver health and education resources to them. So my job as the analyst is to uh, evaluate the program and to communicate both to the public and internally where our strengths and weaknesses are, measure our impact, our outcomes, and, and kind of assess our program every year so we can get better. How do you transfer the skills that you bring as a social worker into the work that you do for the foundations? There's some real hard skills around measurement, evaluation, and research that I bring as a social worker. Um, understanding communities and the person and environment perspective, how a young kid might might have many things going on in their life and mm -hmm. how sports can be a catalyst for positive growth. Those relationship building skills are key to what I bring to the team. Um, just being able to, to understand that there's a lot of systems in play mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a youth or a family's life and, and kind of just meeting them where they're at and understanding their perspective on things. What an interesting way to use your social work skills. Yeah, it's, it's fun too. I mean, we get to be around youth sports all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to just see how it transfers right into to, to a sports culture is, is pretty cool because I didn't really think, think of that as a career opportunity, to be honest, when I first started my career in social work. So it's pretty neat. Excellent. So this is the press box. Yep. Can I sit in Scully's booth? Nope. This area of the stadium is open to the public on game days. Anything you want to know about Dodgers history is right here in this hallway. So where's your office? Uh, right down that hallway over there. You mean you walk past this every day? Yeah, every day. Oh my God, that's home plate at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. One of the fundraisers our foundation is most proud of is this one. Hey, sorry. Hey, did you know the relief pitch card is back there? Yeah, I know everything that's in the hallway, but what I really wanted to show you was this. So this Wall of Fame fundraiser was really successful for the foundation. Uh, people could purchase a baseball um, for their family or for a loved one and have it enshrined in Dodger Stadium for the rest of time. So it's pretty cool. People have put their names up here and this will never come down. And what does the money raised help the foundation do? All the money we raise goes towards our programs. So it's Dodgers RBI or Dodgers Dreamfields or LA Reads, our literacy program. 
and it also goes towards our grant making program. So we support local nonprofits in the community as well. That's awesome, James. What would you tell a social worker who's looking to do something non-traditional, you know, expand their options? I would tell them to stick with their social work values and what they're passionate about mm -hmm. and find a place that where they can capitalize on their passion or that cause in a new setting. How has working in a non-traditional setting improved or enhanced your social work skills? I think my interpersonal skills have, have grown being here because I've had to interact with so many people that are not social workers. Mm. You know, uh, various professionals work here at Dodger Stadium. Being able to form these fresh relationships with people who, who maybe don't know what social work is and explaining our programming from a social work lens to, to communicate to them that we're making real impact. Uh, this isn't just, um, you know, a corporate facade or something like that. game day today. So what's the craziest thing you've ever seen someone do on a visit to the stadium? Someone ate grass off the field once. Seriously? True story. Wow. You. For those who have been watching today, what advice would you give them? For a social worker who's looking to break into a non-traditional organization or company, uh, even a clinical social worker, because those skills are just as transferable. Mm -hmm. I would recommend trying to get face to face with somebody um, on a resume or cover letter. It might be a harder sell for a social worker to get into a non traditional space, but if a social worker is able to get face to face with somebody and kind of talk about what they can bring to the organization, I think that'll be a huge plus. And also to, to not be afraid to jump on an opportunity as soon as it's there because that window of opportunity might be open and closed real fast because these opportunities tend to come few and far between. James, thank you so much for sharing everything you have with our viewers today. I have a gift for you. Oh, thanks Juan, really appreciate it. That'll surely make your coworkers jealous. I bet it will. <laughs> for more information on non-traditional social work, visit dvorikpack.usc.edu backslash career for extended content. On the next episode of Work It With Juan. Welcome to a special holiday episode of Work It With Juan. I'm here at the North Pole to check in on a good friend of mine. Obviously, I see you're upset. Upset? That's an understatement. These elves are just ridiculously unmotivated. As you can see, Matt is clearly not handling stress in the workplace very well. I think you and I could work on what are called emotional intelligence strategies. Who are you talking to? 